The MSI QB512M stands out from the mini PC crowd by using the less common Intel U series, and the results are not what I expected. We'll go over it right after this message. The ESUS Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. So recently I had some comments asking for MSI Cubies to be featured on the channel. I got in touch with MSI and they were kind enough to give me this one. The MSI QB512M uses Intel's 12th gen U series processors and is most commonly available as a bare bones unit, meaning you need to add your own memory, storage and OS. But there are some computer stores that will put together a pre-build like the one I received. MSI's QB512M targets business and productivity and actually has a unique feature to go with it. Do you like mounting your mini on the back of a monitor? Or do you need to be able to turn it on without access to the power button on the front? Well, there's a power button extension cable included in the box. This is definitely something that's kept me from ever mounting minis on the back of monitors. I just have no patience for fumbling around behind my monitor trying to find the power button. Of course, there's still the issue of USB port access, but you can mitigate that somewhat with a monitor that has a USB hub. The QB is a very solid, good looking plastic unit with a metal bottom cover and overall represents a good quality build. Feel free to use that description for your dating profile. This QB features the i7-1255U which is a 10-core CPU with XE graphics. The bare bones option is available in Oz for $679 dues, and that comes with a three-year warranty. While Amazon US, it's actually priced higher when you convert the 529 Benjamins. What? Since when do we get the better deal down under? The front has two USB 3 10 gigabit ports, one Thunderbolt 4, which supports power delivery out, but not power in, as it wouldn't even turn on with my USB-C monitor. There's also a 3.5mm audio jack. The back has another two USB 3 10 gigabit, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, and dual LAN. One of them being Realtek 2.5 gigabit, and the other gigabit. So, up to three 4K displays with this mini. I did mention the power button cable, but in the box you'll also get a monitor mount, a quick guide and screws, 2.5 inch SATA expansion cable, and small power supply. Opening up the QB is easy. Four screws and take the bottom plate off. You can then screw on a 2.5 inch SATA drive to it for extra storage. Otherwise, there's a Gen 4 M.2 NVMe slot, which also supports M.2 SATA. Underneath it is an Intel Wi-Fi card, which actually depends on the CPU model. With the i7, you get an Intel X211. This pre-build arrived with just one stick of DDR4 3200 memory, which will affect graphics performance. So I'm going to test with two sticks for comparison. It also came with a heatsink on the M.2 SSD for cooling, which is great to see. If you get the bare bones, you will need to install an operating system. But this one came with Windows 11 Pro and even a custom desktop wallpaper. It also came with a couple of bits of software pre-installed. First up is Norton 360, which is a 60 day trial. Next is MSI Center, which you should either use upfront or uninstall it because for some reason it eats up CPU cycles constantly. Almost 25% in my case, which is bananas. MSI Center can be used to create a recovery drive and it has some other features. Uninstalling the MSI Center SDK removed the CPU performance hit. There's also the MSI Cloud Center, which allows you to sync your data with the cloud. But if you did get the bare bones, you can install a clean copy of Windows, or you might prefer to run Linux. So as usual, I tried Ubuntu off a USB drive, and it worked just fine. Happy days! With the benchmarks, I tend to group the mid to high end minis so you can see the differences. But one thing that's not shown until much later is maximum power draw. And the reason I mention it is because the QB512M uses so little power, I thought I'd set the mood by showing it now. Let me get some candles. So, there it is, just 39 watts. 
that's like Intel Alder Lake N series levels of power draw with much better performance. So keep that in mind as we check out the results. Single core is really impressive, with a QB punching above its weight. Didn't expect it to almost match a Ryzen 6900HX and it's 25% ahead of the Ryzen 5700U. Multi-core is where it falls behind and can't compete even with a 5700U. It's almost a 30% drop in score. Video encoding does benefit from dual channel memory, so I've included both results. There's around a 9% gain with dual channel, which again is quite a bit behind the 5700U. With a single stick of memory, the QB matches the i5-12450H in the DX11 graphics benchmark, but dual channel provides almost a 20% boost. Again, it's behind the 5700U by around 15%. Dual channel in DX12 is up by 15%, but it's down by 13% against the 5700U. MSI's QB512M comes with a Gen 4 M.2 slot, but this pre-build only has a Gen 3 drive, and yep, that's Gen 3 speeds alright. Where the i7-1255U really excels at is multimedia workloads. Higher single core would do wonders for the Adobe suite, and Intel's QuickSync hardware decoder is unmatched. It even allows me to edit my 4K video project without stutters. With a Ryzen 5700U in comparison, the CPU hit 100% load, and would freeze playback on this same project. So, definitely for a bunch of productivity apps, the QB wins out in the ultra low power category. So I think we've already made it really clear that the QB isn't marketed for any gaming, but the Thunderbolt 4 port allows you to hook up an eGPU and make it into a mean gaming machine. Here's my test using a Razer Core X with an RTX 3070. The Ryzen 5700U's integrated graphics will outperform the i7-1255U in gaming, but I wanted to test it anyway. I have to know, damn it. So, we're looking at around 100 PS average for Valorant. Dota 2 stays above 60 FPS. Counter-Strike 2 falls into unplayable territory for an esports game. And League of Legends runs fine on a potato, so no surprise it's doing fine here. As an emulation box, you should be able to play most of the Wii U library just fine, as Breath of the Wild is the toughest game to emulate. PS3 on the other hand is not so good. The games that will run at full speed 1080p will be limited. You'll need to drop the resolution for a lot of them. MSI's visual bias is nice and easy to use, but most options aren't accessible. There are some options such as auto power on and wake up configurations, but where's the TDP and fan curve options? The QB512M idles at 10 watts from the wall, which is fine. And I've already shown the maximum power draw, but here it is again to really show that stark contrast. Around 40 watts is much easier to keep cool, and the QB has the lowest max CPU temperature recorded. Although, I would have preferred to let the CPU cook for another few degrees and have lower fan noise instead. Don't get me wrong, fan noise under load is on the lower side already, but even less noise would be nice since the CPU temp has room to move. That's why a fan setting in the BIOS would be super useful. The NVMe storage temp will depend on whether you add a heatsink or not with a barebones build. Since this pre-build came with one, it's not surprising the Gen 3 drive didn't break a sweat. Okay, so let's summarize. What I like about the QB512M is the 3 year warranty, and that it comes with an external power button, which makes mounting the Mini a little less painful. Fan noise is low. It uses very little power, yet can still handle my 4K video project. What I don't like is the lack of BIOS options. Also, there's something wrong with MSI Center to be using that much CPU power. 
The QB512M has a lot of competition from both the Intel and AMD side, with plenty of minis with newer generation CPUs available, so a price cut would make it more attractive. The low power draw doesn't come free. The i7-1255U is obviously not as powerful as Intel's H or P-series processors. MSI's QB12M succeeds for its target market as a low-powered mini PC option that doesn't make a lot of noise, yet still gets the job done in the office. If you found Intel NUX to be too noisy or don't want to mess around with Chinese mini PCs due to lack of support, local warranties, security concerns and whatever else, then here's a good alternative. And if you'd like to check out the Ryzen 5700U I use for comparisons in this video, the review is right here. Cheers!